I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Sabetic come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Sabetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Nine endless years, but they ended. Three thousand tormenting days and haunted nights. An eternity of nerves, with my stomach in hard knots and my chest bound in steel so I could hardly breathe. How did I last through it? I don't know. Maybe I, I didn't. Maybe part of a man dies after doing some of the things I had to do. Worth it? Definitely. Would I do it all over again? I don't know. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. Dana Andrews as Matt Sabetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Pennies from the Dead. I don't like it. I stand in front of Comrade Revson's desk while he studies some papers in front of him and looks up at me from time to time with those small, contemptuous eyes of his. Suddenly, out of nowhere, he snaps. How much do you weigh? Why? I ask you. 180 pounds, I'd say. Good. Why? Eyes brown, hair brown. Height. Just tall enough for my feet to reach the ground. With apologies for the gag to Abraham Lincoln, okay? Never mind, you'll do. First, you will go to a passport photo studio and get a photo of yourself. Passport photo? To attach to your passport, yes. My passport? Where am I going? You are not going. You have just arrived. Well, did I have a good trip? And where from? If you were not otherwise such a good man for us, I should find it necessary to discipline you for your impertinence. You will take this passport made out for one Alexei Borodin. Comrade Borodin landed last night from one of our European ports. How did he get a passport? We have methods. Forged? We have methods. Go on. Comrade Borodin is an important Soviet agent we wish to have in this country. However, for the time being, we wish to kill two birds with one stone. We need money. We always need money. How does this cure it? We have here other papers giving you power of attorney to act for a certain Olga Lazarov of Gorodok, a town near Minsk, Russia. Yeah? Power of attorney for what? To collect monies due her from the estate of Private First Class Joseph Lazarov of the United States Army, recently deceased. Private Lazarov has no American relatives to claim his insurance and other estate. So we shall claim it in the name of his old forgotten grandmother in Gorodok. I see. Get a suitable picture taken, then come back. Then I will instruct you where to go and whom to see at the Independent Veterans Organization. It is quite simple. Go and come back. I don't like it. I hate it. I don't quite get all of it yet, but what I get, I hate I've pulled some shoddy little tricks for the party, but this looks like the main event in the Dirty Derby. I go to a place and get a fast photo of myself that makes me look like a B-television version of a Balkan spy. Then I go to a public telephone, making sure I'm not being followed, and dial my FBI contact. Hello. Drugstore? This is the drugstore. May I help you? Well, this is Dr. Herbert. Yes, doctor. How about lunch today? Uh, sounds good to me. You very hungry? Plenty. Where? You name it. I'm at Main and Temple, and there's a little restaurant with booths on the next corner south. Well, how about ten minutes? Right. Thank you, Doctor. So long. Yeah, Matt, we're familiar with the device, all right. 
It's one of the ways the party finances itself. Can anything be done about it? Yeah, it's a tough order, Matt. See, the way it works, the party keeps a file on all U.S. veterans of Russian origin. Now, when one dies without heirs or legacies, the party darn well digs up an heir somewhere behind the Iron Curtain, see? You mean they'll have to turn over Joseph Lazaroff's effects and all to me, to deliver to a relative of his somewhere behind the Iron Curtain, who doesn't even exist? You have power of attorney. All legal and to measure. Forged, probably. Phony, probably. Can't you do something about it? We don't know yet. You don't know yet. Meanwhile, I've got to do the dirty work. I've got to be the one who steals the pennies off a dead American soldier's eyes to hand them over to the commies. I won't do it. Look, Matt. Yeah. It's a chance for you to see the inside of the gouge and report to us. We can do certain things about it, sure. But it gives us more research on the trick, fattens our files until we're ready to act. Meanwhile, I pick dead pockets for the red. If you don't do it, they'll find somebody who will do it. Gladly. They won't report to the FBI, either. No. Yeah, you happen to match the description of this Borodin person on the passport, that's all. The Reds could find ten men in this town to match that description. What happens to Borodin? Yeah, it's an interesting angle. Looks as if they're turning a Soviet agent loose in this country and turning you loose on PFC Lazarov's estate at the same time. Two birds with one stone is the way Revson the corny comrade, put it. Don't underrate Revson. I don't. And keep in touch. Now, what do you want to eat? Mm, I'm not hungry. I report back to Revson. He appraises my passport photo and then substitutes it for the photo of Alexei Borodin. He gives me the name of the man to see at the Independent Vets Organization and some final words of cheer and caution before I rob the dead. Be prepared for a hostile reception. Stand firmly, however, on your legal rights as represented in your papers, and which they are unable to controvert. There is nothing they can do but recognize this Olga Lazarov's claim. Suppose I'm questioned about my passport, my English, my contact with Olga Lazarov. Answer or not, as you please. If the official gets unruly, rebuke him. Have no scruples about that. Assert your rights. Very good. Always place him in the wrong if you can. Leave it to me. There is a matter of some $12,000 involved, if our information is correct. A tidy little donation to the cause. And already as good as ours. All you have to do is arrange to collect it. Go. Alexei Borodin, is it? That's correct, Mr. Gregory. How did this Olga Lazarov happen to learn of her grandson's death? The obituary was in the American papers. I wasn't aware that the American press reached such Soviet centers as Moscow, let alone a hinterland like this, uh, what is it? Dorodok, not far from Minsk. Does it? Pardon? Does our press penetrate the Iron Curtain? Oh, not quite, sir. Of course. However, the Soviet government has the interest of its citizens close to its heart. Did you speak to this Olga Lazarov? I must ask you not to refer to her as this Olga Lazarov. Olga Lazarov or Madame Lazarov, if you please. Did you speak to Olga Lazarov? There's a signature, properly witnessed by two citizens of Gorodok. Mm, yes. Any data at all is open to your closest scrutiny and investigation. To whatever extent possible under the circumstances. Please call me at any time you have my hotel. You appreciate the necessity for delay. Naturally. A fair amount of money's involved, and uh, these small effects. He opens a drawer and takes out a soft leather pouch, tosses it on the desk. It's old and dark, with age and sweat and handling, closed with soiled drawstrings. I look at it. I feel a tightening in my throat. This is it. This humble leather pouch containing, I don't know, trinkets, mementos, badges, medals maybe. I don't know. But all at once, I want to know. I want to see and touch the things that Joseph Lazaroff, soldier of his adopted country, thought worth saving. I want to visit the grave of Joseph Lazaroff, dying alone and unmourned in a little rooming house. I want to say, hello, Joe. I want to say so long, Joe. Sorry. That's it, and that's about all of it. You mind if I open the pouch? Go ahead. That's right. What? Trinkets. 
Second place, 100 yard dash, purple heart. Pass ring. A single old fashioned gold cufflink with a tiny diamond chip in the center. Some old coins. Discharge button. And that's all. Does Madame Lazaroff want that, too? Just one gold cufflink? We didn't take the other, believe me. I'm just asking. Uh, could I visit Private Lazaroff's grave? Why? It's customary. You certainly do it up brown, don't you? Whatever that means, and I don't care what it means, I'd like to see Private Lazaroff's grave. Very well, Mr. Borodin. I've arranged it for you. I find the little gravestone among the thousands in the cemetery. I'm glad Private First Class Lazarov has the company of his fellow soldiers. It's a fairly new grave. The plot hasn't greened over yet, but it will. I stand there a while with my hat off, I think. So long, Joe. Don't be too rough on us. The job says I've got to rob you and hand it over to strangers. Look at it this way, Joe. It's an investment. It's experience and the inside dope. And it all goes into files where we'll have use for it someday. Take it this way, soldier. It's your last contribution to your country, way beyond the call of duty. Your country, the USA, even if your name is Lazarus. Okay? I'm almost at the exit gate when I suddenly realize that there'd been a tired pot of geranium on P.F.C. Lazarus' grave and none on the others. But something else wipes that out of my mind in a hurry. A car is parked at the exit, sitting behind the wheel, looking grim as Comrade Revson. Revson. Get in. But what are you doing here? How did you know I was here? Get in. Trouble? Enough. And for you. Me? Why? What? Get in. Back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabatik. And I was a communist for the FBI. And the second act of our story. For half an hour, we drive out into the country. Revson not saying a word. His mouth set and his eyes dark with anger. Finally, he stops the car and we walk away from it. We never know when the FBI might have wired a car or an office or a hotel room to record conversation. We sit down under a tree. Revson pulls up grass for a moment. Then he looks at me and comes to the point like a pistol shot. They've arrested Borodin. The police? The FBI. Very curious. Why? Why did they pick Borodin up? He passed customs all right. Nobody questioned his passport. They might have let him through, then notified the FBI that he was in on a questionable passport. The FBI have picked him up without any passport at all. You and I alone knew he had none. Well, that's true, but I... You have his passport. By your instructions, comrade. Give it to me. Certainly. You'll have to put Borodin's picture back and get the passport to him. Leave that to me. Does that put Borodin in the clear? I think so. It is very important for him to be in the clear. He's a trained Soviet agent. Look, if the FBI has picked up the real Alexei Borodin, how can I go back to the veterans organization claiming to be Borodin? There is no reason whatever to suppose that the organization keeps closely informed on FBI activity. Uh, that's true. The FBI does not exactly publicize its every move. <laughs> right. And $12,000 will mean a lot to us right now. Worried? Not now. Let's go back to the car, then. Hello? Mr. Borodin? Uh, yes. This is Gregory of the Veterans Organization. I wonder if you could come down to my office and discuss a few final points in the Private Joseph Lazaroff matter. Oh, certainly, Mr. Gregory. When would it be convenient for you? Could you make it right now? Coming right down. Good 
morning. I took a taxi ride down when you phoned. Mr. Borden, this is Mr. Darwin Dykes. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dykes? How do you do, Mr. Borden? I wonder if I might ask you a few little questions. Sure, go ahead. May I see your passport, please? Passport? You see, I'm new at this job, Mr. Borden. Simply as a precaution, I called on the FBI to help me out on this matter. The FBI? Yes. Here are my credentials. I see. It's a curious thing. Another Mr. Borodin entered the country by the same port of entry that you did. Somewhere along the line, he claims to have lost his passport. This Mr. Borodin has a passport. I can vouch for that much. Could I see it, sir? Why, you don't seem to have it on me. Oh? I I must have left it in my other suit. Well, I have a car outside. I'll run you down to your hotel. Could we stop at a pay station somewhere for a minute or two? There's a phone call I have to make. Privately. Hello? Jefferson? Who is this? Svetik. Svetik? What do I do? That veterans official just got a hunch to call in the FBI. They asked me for my passport, and I don't have it anymore. What do I do? Who is this? Svetik. You have the wrong number. Revson? I'm sorry. You have the wrong number. Hello? Well, listen. Hello? Ah. I didn't mean the wrong number. Revson, all right. Hello? Hello, drugstore? Drugstore. Dr. Herbert talking. Shoot, doctor. Listen. Listen, I've been picked up by the FBI without my passport. The real Borodin has it. So what do I do? I've called Revson and he's powdered out on me. What? Revson, the second I said FBI, he didn't know me anymore. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is this? I told you, Dr. Herbert. Oh, you're the Dr. Herbert I met yesterday at that party over the cafe on 3rd and Moffat Avenue, aren't you? No. You sound like him. Oh, sure, I met you and your wife at 5 p.m. downstairs. No, 3rd and Moffat. No. Oh, sorry, you've got the wrong party then. Hello? Oh, Hello? Nola? I thought sure I'd left my passport in this room. Think you might have lost yours, too? I can't find it. It's too bad. Just how bad is it? Well, I'll have to ask you not to leave town, Mr. Borody. Oh, I, I won't. She will want to have a little talk with you. Meanwhile, you uh, you may find your passport. I'm sure I will. I'm sure you will. Goodbye, sir. I'm alone in my hotel room. And alone in the world, alone and deserted, Revson has disowned me. My FBI contact has hung up on me. One tells me I have the wrong number. The other tells me I'm somebody he met at a party on 3rd and Moffat, and I was with my wife. Wife, 3rd and... All at once, it's sunup. All at once, the dawn. I grab my hat and take a taxi to 3rd and Moffat. It's a little after 5, but there is my FBI contact sitting in a booth waiting for me. Don't you see, Matt, by talking to Revson, first you put me in a very difficult spot. If I get you off the hook now with the FBI, Revson will know you've pulled some important wires. Probably the FBI. Well, they'll put two and two together and get FBI, and you'll be in serious trouble. What should I do? Well, I wouldn't talk to you over the phone, but I'd see you. Same goes for Comrade I. See him? I think you'd better. Will you keep an eye on me, sort of? Sort of. Because someday I'd like to have that wife you invented, if I live. <laughs> You were a fool, Svetik. An accident of birth, okay. No nonsense, do you hear? How was I to know the veterans organization character would call in the FBI? You should not have called me. Then you come to the office. You know the FBI wires officers. All right, so you took me to this rehearsal hall. We're okay. The question now is, what do we do? We have a choice. Only one of you can be the real Alexei Borodin. Borodin is an important agent. Svetik has access to important money. If we look rotten to the Independent Veterans Organization, we lose this 12000 and they'll always be suspicious of us. Our whole scheme will be exposed. But Borodin is an important agent. Moscow trained, Lenin Institute. If he gets the passport, he stays. If Borodin gets the passport, he stays, yeah. He stays. I won't have to steal those pennies from a dead American soldier's eyes. 
Then I think, sure. But if I don't get the passport, I'll have to get off the hook with the FBI. They'll have to know that I'm FBI, too. I'll get off. But Revson will be suspicious, then. Suspicious? Well, you know. And my usefulness of the FBI will be over. That's the problem, then. Do I want to skin out of robbing a dead soldier for the commies? Or do I want to keep on working for the FBI? I don't know. I just don't know. Spadig? Yeah? Borodin is a very important man. You want to let him have the passport? $12,000 right now is important money. Yes. Well? Comrade Svetig, you decide. Isn't that a pretty big decision for me to make? Make it. All right. I want the passport. I telephone the Independent Veterans Organization. I'm asked to come down. I show the passport. I'm a good boy now. It'll take some time for the transaction to be finalized, but we'll have Private Lazaroff's estate cleared for you in time and uh, made over to you as attorney for Olga Lazaroff. Thank you. No reason why you can't have this little bag of his small effects now. I take the pathetic little leather pouch with its poor, eloquent relics of the dead. I find my way out to the cemetery again to pay my respects. To offer my last apologies. A girl edges past me and stands silently at another grave a few yards away. I pour the humble tokens out of the leather pouch. I wanted to tell you, soldier, I hate what I had to do. But the comrades won't be wanting these small things. Purple heart, cufflink, grade school athletic medal. I wanted to tell you, soldier, with your kind permission. I'd like to keep them for you. Okay? I turn to go. Something in the grass glitters in the setting sun. I pick it up. Seems I dropped the cufflink. It was shaky. Pretty dim eyes. Miserable. I've been pouring the little tokens back into the leather pouch. I stop short. I have two cufflinks where there was only one before. I look back and I see the girl standing there. Are you, girl. I mean you. I didn't do anything. I'm not doing anything wrong. Really. Yeah. Just look at this cufflink. Give it to me. Then it is yours. Give it to me. Give it to me. And why are you standing at Joe Lazaroff's grave now? I can't help it. I have to see him again. Joe <laughs> gave you this cufflink, didn't he? I have to say goodbye again. I have to. He gave you the cufflink? Yes. <laughs> why? He couldn't afford to give me a ring. A ring? It's an old-fashioned cufflink his father owned. You hold it between the middle finger and the ring finger. See? So. It curls around the ring finger. It looks like a ring is on the marriage finger. See? You see? Marriage finger? His room in Mama's rooming house. Loved each other. But Mama said no. I couldn't marry him. Oh. But I did. Wow. Secretly. So nobody would find out. We were married almost a year. We were so happy. Look, listen to me. This is big news for both of us. But mostly for me. Now listen to me closely, Mrs. Joseph Lazaroff. <laughs> I tell soldier Lazaroff's widow and heir what to do to get her legacy and warn her solidly not to involve me. I don't leave her with her dead until I know she's got it right. Then I go. I'm a new man, washed clean by the tears of gratitude in her eyes. This is a lump sum the comrades aren't going to get, but they won't know it until I'm sure Alexei Borodin is safely deported again. Twin bill, double victory. I hit the pavement. Away from the grave, the girl, and the gratitude, I come down to earth again. I know that gratitude is great, but I know that nothing will save me if the comrades find out what I've engineered with their help. Comes the showdown. I'm a communist for the FBI. I walk alone. Dana 
Andrews will return in just a moment. This is Dana Andrews stepping out of the character of Matt Svetik to remind you that our story wasn't pure fiction. Oh, no. We've changed names and modified incidents to disguise the story from the wrong people to protect the right people. But you get the general idea. Sure you do. And that's what counts. Next week, another adventure of Matt Svetik who worked undercover for the FBI. Hear it. Because you are the right people to hear it. Thanks. Thanks. 